Hey, what is going on, ladies and the gentlemen? Welcome back to Europa Universalis 4. My name is Corbett, and I'll be your host today as we walk through the easiest way to get the King of Jerusalem achievement. This achievement is pretty straightforward, but if you've never attempted it seriously, I can see why many players are a little bit daunted by it. This achievement took me just under 56 minutes, and I was going through the process pretty leisurely. The time it takes you can be anywhere between my lucky case where my king died early or much longer. In any case, I'll be walking you through the entire process I went through to get this achievement, so grab a snack, sit back, and relax. Starting in 1444, what you'll want to do is the following. You can rival who you want since it doesn't really matter. Next, you'll not want to do what I did, which was build up to the force limit. There are a couple of reasons for this that we'll get into later on, but the main point is that you don't want to waste the ducats on building to force limit like I did. Next, drop army maintenance and delete your fort, since your fort will never really be useful. Next, send your lightships out to protect trade in Aleppo, and send both of your merchants out to collect in both Alexandria and Aleppo for maximum profit. Don't forget to mothball the rest of your fleet, or you could optionally choose to pawn off your transports. Preferably, you should mothball them, since you'll probably want them later on. What you do with your ships is basically up to you, but I do recommend that you don't build any since your force limit will be dropping for a good amount of time later on. Next, you can demand a few ducats from the bourgeoisie, and use the standard interactions to get 150 military power from the nobility. Hopefully you'll get a pretty good general, but seeing as you won't be the one doing the majority of the fighting, most of the time it just won't matter a whole ton. Next, you'll want to look at who the Mamluks have rivaled from the beginning of the game. Every time I've tested this, it's been the Ottomans and Karakoyonlu, so you really shouldn't need to do any restarts for this strategy to work. Immediately start improving relations with both the Ottomans and Karakoyonlu. If there's one thing I absolutely cannot stress enough, it is to never disinherit your heir. I realize that she's really trash, okay, but you must keep her alive until adulthood. I was pretty lucky having my relatively bad king die and be replaced with a pretty good regency council until she's of age. Now that the lines are drawn and everything's set up, it's just time to begin the waiting game. Yeah, you heard me, it's a really long waiting game. Just speed 5 for a while and that's pretty much it until a few things happen. You see, this strategy relies on a unique event called the King of Cyprus that you get once your garbage heir is the Queen of Cyprus. Basically, you get the choice of either saying no to the pretty alright king in vassalization, or just going along with it. In this case, we'll just want to go with it. While you're waiting for your current king to die though, you'll probably want to occupy yourself with developing the renaissance in your country. Doing so allows you to get a massive boost in the economy and force limit once you're free of the Mamluks again. It also gives you the splendor you'll want to spend on anything you might deem useful. I'd recommend either the aggressive expansion or the ability to claim adjacent to claims. The first one, for obvious reasons, being the only Catholic nation surrounded by Sunni nations. The latter is for if you want to be a little bit aggressive and go for Vizan. So once the Renaissance is in your country and you're chilling out as a vassal of the Mamluks, try and get the Ottomans to like you more in literally any possible way you can think of. The goal is of course for them to support your independence, so you need to get that to happen in pretty much any way you can. I suppose it was really lucky of me to get the Ottoman leader as a naive enthusiast on my first run, but I'm certain there's a good chance you can get this step done without that much of a hassle. The Mamluks often go to war with a minor nation in Anatolia, and the Ottomans, after going for Byzantium, often hit up Kandar as their next target. Having both of these nations weakened slightly by war often gives you enough clout with them for it to work out. If you need a little boost, don't be afraid to hire a diplomatic reputation advisor for what little boost it can give you. Once you've secured the Ottomans as an ally in the upcoming independence war, you can choose to wait and have Karakoyonlu help you out too, but I've tested that just having the Ottomans is much more than enough. With no reason to wait, simply declare the war and let the Ottomans carry you all the way to victory. Once the war begins, there's a pretty good chance the Ottomans will start subsidizing you a pretty alright sum of money, which I'd use to hire admin and military advisors since a good chunk of your monarch points got drained into developing the renaissance. Honestly, you shouldn't have to do anything, but remember to bring your ships back home before you declare the war. You could choose to participate in a few battles if you want, but there's no use in the loss of men and money if you don't really want to. What I'd suggest though is to occupy as much of the land near the Ottomans as you can because having the control over those areas gives you more war participation when combined with the rest of Egypt that'll be auto-transferred under your control. Therefore, you'll have to give the Ottomans less in the peace deal if you go aggressive in the beginning. Of course, you could always go full traitor and give them absolutely nothing, but from my experience, the Ottomans also make a useful ally for the second war against the Mamluks you'll be going into, and maybe even the third, fourth, and so on. 
Most times, the Mamluks are allied to Karaman, so you can pretty much give the Ottomans one or two provinces at the end of the war. With what war score remains, you can take the three provinces needed to form Jerusalem, and a bit of money as well. After that, it's a simple game of waiting for cores to be done, putting down rebels, and voila! You should be set to either continue your game as Jerusalem and abusing the power granted by the Ottomans to absorb the rest of the Mamluks, or you could just end your game satisfied with your newly gained achievement. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, don't forget to leave a hugely appreciated like, or leave a dislike and drop a comment down below telling me why you disliked the video. In any case, to see more EU4 guides like this in the future, hitting that subscribe button would go a long way for letting me do this more frequently in the future. This is Corbett signing off, and as always, have a fantastic day.